analyses. This was one of the best classes I've taken at NYU. He valued teaching us how to report on Africa in a more complete, well-rounded way, fighting against tired stereotypes. He helped reveal the importance of reporting on stories of social justice in a way that empowers people rather than relying on overused generalizations. Um, his commitment to teaching young journalists how to report internationally and having fun while doing it has been instrumental to my growth as a journalist and a person. Chike Frankie Dilsey. <laughs> Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, Melissa. Um, yesterday, the president sent out an email, one of his, I guess, weekly or monthly emails. And one thing that struck me there was um, he reminded us that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. actually came to NYU 70 years ago. And um, just so that I get this right, this was the quote that MLK told us way back when. He had urged people at NYU to fight the dissemination of distortions and half-truths. That was 70 years ago. And my uh, colleagues and my profession have been under siege. We've been called the opposition. We've been called liars. We've been called all sorts of names. In the last year and a half over this campaign, I have had the, uh, the, the struggle with sort of trying to train journalists, and now all of our students, to think for themselves, to come to their own conclusions, and to realize that telling the truth is a noble profession. And I am so glad that that had an impact on some of our students here today. I am an immigrant. My father came here to go to college way back in the 1960s, and MLK meant a lot to him. He called me this morning, and his one thing that he reminded me of was that success has many fathers. So I hope you'll be kind enough to allow me to acknowledge some of the people who have made it quite wonderful for me to be successful here at NYU. A lot of what I've done in the classroom has been borrowed from my colleagues who are great journalists, but also great professors. Some of them are here, some of them are not here because they're teaching. But most importantly, I have stolen from Mohammed Bazi, Stephen Solomon, Mitch Stevens, Adam Penenberg, Dan Fagan, and Ted Conover, as well as Pamela Newkirk. So please help me thank them. When younger professors are asking you to come and sit in your classes and ask him for your help, it means a lot when you say yes and you give the strategies for your success. I came to NYU and I found a very, very interesting community, a community of scholars, and there were two people who welcomed me in and allowed me to show my own scholarship. One of them is our university professor, Deb Willis, who I think was here, may still be here. Yay, Deb! <laughs> Deb has the biggest arms in NYU. She pulls everybody in. Deb allowed me to be more confident in my own scholarship. The other person is Professor Aram Akbar, who is in Abu Dhabi at the moment. But when I needed help in the classroom, Awan left his office and came up and sat in my classes and said, see, you're smart, all you have to do is talk. <laughs> and it has been really, really, really wonderful for me. At a time that I was unwavering in what I was doing, our Vice Provost Uli Bear always was there for me, as well as Bridget McCurtis. So I want to say thank you. All of you, all of you are the fathers that my father was talking about this morning when he says success has many fathers. I must also thank my fearless leader and friend, Dean Gabby Starr, who is not here. Gabby always, yes, where are you? Yes. Yay, Gabby! <laughs> thank you so much for being you. Thank you so much for listening to me. I had some wonderful news earlier this year, and the only person I could think about sharing it was Gabby. And I emailed her, and we're going to have champagne. I won't tell anybody else about that. <laughs> I must also thank my champion, Tom Carew, for everything that he does, and just being there. And most importantly, my chair, Dr. Perry Class. She's a medical doctor like my partner, Scott. So she seems to always know when to say the things and when to just leave me and let me fly. So thank you, Perry. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, all my family that is here. I appreciate this. 
MLK left us a legacy. And one of the things that I hope to take away from this is to have the courage to continue to push my students to be courageous and to tell the truth and to do work with integrity, but also for myself to continue to stand strong and do work that I think is important, especially when everything around me is telling me no. So thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, everybody. And so much thank you. And please work very nice, Marcus Mabry is here. So thank you, Marcus. So I wasn't trying to pull him off the, the, the hook, that wasn't. Um, I just wanted to make sure he didn't leave off the stage. Um, Dean Carew, if I can have you come up here and oh, start. Yes. You could join us real quick. I'll have Frankie anytime. <laughs> <laughs> 